Mags, do you realize that we have less than 90 days left before Christmas? My gosh, time flies so fast, doesn't it? I know, and you know what that means, right? 90 shopping days to go? Yes, but it also means that we only have less than three months to fulfill those resolutions we made to ourselves at the start of this year. Remember those? Oh no, I haven't been very good at keeping them. But it's never too late, right? Right, there is still time to make sure that we keep those promises we made to ourselves to be better, healthier, and happier. And if you need a little bit of encouragement, well, we're here to cheer you on every step of the way. I am Maggie Wilson. And I'm Tara Legaros, and this is Fit and Fab, your ultimate guide to being a better you. Reach. Tonight, we're going to show you how you can better your lives and lifestyles. With a feature on the leanest cuisine, a guide to the latest hairstyles, a segment in our lifestyle makeover winner, dragon boat rowing, and a Q&A about the different types of foundation. Okay, it's a given we both love to eat. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what do we love to eat? Mags, what's your favorite cuisine? I guess uh, my favorite cuisine is Japanese and Cantonese shabu shabu. Really I love it. It rocks. Oh, I love Japanese also. Mm -hmm. But I like spicy food, so I'd have to go with Korean food. Korean food? Like kimchi? Di ba mabaho yun? Pero masarap siya. Really? Yeah. But why do you think we enjoy Japanese, Korean, mostly Asian food? No? Asian food? Well, I guess it's because it's more healthy, right? Oh, I, ako, I like it because it's light. It's not so That's right. You know, Japanese, Italian, Chinese. Now, if you're a global gastronomer, then you should be familiar with these or more popular cuisines. But the question is really, which cuisine reigns supreme when it comes to being lean? Find out which of your favorite food genres is the healthiest in tonight's Fit to Eat. Chinese, American, Mediterranean, Pinoy, Italian, Japanese? If you're a girl like me who loves to eat out, there are just so many dishes to choose from. The options can be crazy. Tonight, we take you on a food trip that you will surely remember. A trip around the world for the best and healthiest cuisines. You don't have to ride a plane to experience the best of the world's most famous dishes. A simple trip around the metro will take you right at the heart of scrumptious cuisines. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Which of these cuisines are the leanest of all? The tastiest and healthiest, we've got them all covered for you. Let's start our trip right where we're at. Ang sarap ng pagkain Pinoy, di ba? There is no doubt about it. Filipino dishes are one of the best cuisines in the world. A typical Filipino dish would consist of highly flavored food. Uh, it's maybe salty, sour, spicy, but not highly seasoned. Kare-kare, adobo, sinigang, pinakbit, binagoongan. Mmm, these are of course the Pinoy bestsellers. Here at Kamayan Restaurant, we found them all and more. For Filipino food, when you say Filipino or Kamayan Restaurant, means kare-kare and the adobo. These Pinoy dishes are tasty indeed. All made yummier when eaten with your hands. Kamayan style, the ba? But because of our culinary heritage, some of our dishes are rich and have a high salt, sugar, and fat content. The pork adobo, the pork kare-kare, bagoong in our pinakbet, not exactly the healthiest options on the menu. But nutritionists say it's not the end of the world for Filipino food lovers. We just have to wean ourselves off the fatty foods and opt for the healthy ones. We also have healthy and nutritious meals we can freely munch on, like fresh lumpiang ubod and our wide variety of seafood dishes. We suggest the vegetable like the ubod, fish, which is, we say, quinoa, which we broil it and then put, garl uh, put onions and tomatoes on top, okay, which is also healthy because there's no oil in it. We also have seafood, which we also cook in tomato sauce, which we know every... Tomato sauce is also healthy. Who says Filipino food is all fat? The next time you make lamon, make sure to lessen the lechon and go for the healthier fare. The next destination on our international food trip? China. 
Who doesn't love to go Chinese? Their cuisine is one of the tastiest, most well-known, and most accessible, thanks to the number of every present Chinatowns in every part of the world. Authentic Chinese restaurants like Choi Garden Seafood offer a wide variety of delectable food. From the classic dumplings, sweet and sour pork, to duck and pigeon, even to the more exotic finds, name it and the Chinese have it. Lahat ng flavor nandiyan. It can cook as a sweet, spicy, as a exotic. Pwede rin lumalabas sa Chinese food. Unfortunately, the richness of Chinese cuisine comes with a hefty price. Because most of their food is deep fried, sautéed and salted, they're also usually high in cholesterol. Chinese cuisine are not really concerned about nutrition, about its nutrient contents, but it's more of the flavor, texture, color, and aroma. But if you're a real Chinese foodie who can't give up Cantonese cravings cold turkey, the good news is there's a whole selection of healthier Chinese menu items. And all you have to do is order them. For the health, uh, first we will recommend as a light food, no? like uh, seafood, fish, because fish is for a uh, specialty din sa amin dito. Go for their steamed seafood like Lapu Lapu. Some flavorful taste with less of the oil and with absolutely less calories. Living for the American dream? Why not live for the American cuisine? Their steaks, fries, and burgers have always been a part of our daily diets. American food is actually a diverse culture of food brought into one. Most of the American food are, are broiled or just grilled, uh, deep fried. Um, it's really home food, home cooked food. Here at Fridays, we found the best baby back ribs, buffalo wings, mac and cheese, and a whopping bacon cheeseburger, which are all staples of the American diet. Eating the American way means eating large and oftentimes supersized. And that's a daily diet no no. To go Yankee healthy, nutritionists strongly suggest we stick to strictly counting our daily recommended cals. 1,500 calories a day. This means saying no to supersized meals and including just a playing card size, burger or steak, and a lot of vegetables. Like this healthy grilled chicken salad. My favorite is your my, the Shanghai salad. It's uh, low carb. Uh, it's with a dressing called lime cilantro. It's with charred grilled chicken, which we grill it. It's low fire. And it's with crisp romaine lettuce and mandarin oranges. See, the American way of eating doesn't have to be all jumbo. So what's next on our global gastronomy tour? Your appetito will surely go loco for these scrumptious Italian dishes. Italian cuisine is one of our most loved international dishes. Pasta and pizza? Bellissima! We found authentic Italian meals here at El Contro, where the aroma of the food, Italian coffee, and wine made the ambiance more cozy and their food more inviting. Italian cuisine is uh, a healthy food. Uh, it's the way we, you cook. Uh, like using poor olive oil, not a cooking oil. Plus you use the good ingredient. Then in Italy, the tradition, why they have a long life, is only for the healthy food. In the restaurant or in the house. Olive oil is indeed one of the healthiest types of oil and it's generously poured over every Italian dish. It gives the food more flavor without the dreaded cholesterol. Chef Gino whipped up these tempting, genuinely Italian treats for us. Spaghetti aglio olio mare, crespelia, and a very thick slice of T-bone steak. While Italian staples like pasta, risotto, and bread are packed with carbs, you can always ask for low-carb options, like wheat pasta. And remember, to have guilt-free Italian food, always go for the red tomato-based sauces and say no to the creamy ones. They're just easier to burn. Our last stop on our food trip, Japan. One of the most distinct and unique cuisines is Japanese. Sushi, sashimi, tempura, oh, I can't wait to try them all. I went to Saisaki Restaurant, famous for their authentic Japanese buffet. The line is filled with Japanese food lovers like me, and I obviously didn't mind queuing with them. All right, you know, I'm, I'm a, such a big fan of Japanese food because not only is it healthy, but I look at Japanese food to be some kind of a, an art, 
to making sushi kasi diba tinan mo ang ganda nila tingnan parang ayaw mo silang kainin kasi they're so pretty and of course you must never forget the wasabi because it kills all the microorganisms in the food kasi most of the Japanese food is raw ako I'm not such a big fan of wasabi kasi hindi ko kaya na maanghang but apparently it's meant to be good for you especially if you have problems with your nose like sinusitis it cleans up the air for the Japanese cuisine, it would be considered as one of the healthiest in the world. It composed of fish, fresh seafoods, um, vegetables, and rice. Because the Japanese prefer to eat their food raw, grilled or steamed, nutritionists have long considered their cuisine to be the healthiest and most nutritious. And thanks to their love for fresh seafood like tuna and salmon, it's no wonder that the Japanese live long, healthy lives. And of course, your Japanese meal cannot be complete without, of course, traditional Japanese hot tea. Rich in antioxidants, green tea decreases the risk of cholesterol and cleanses our digestive system. We can still enjoy whatever type of dish if we choose to eat healthy and in moderation. Wherever your taste buds may take you, whether it may be American, Filipino, Japanese, Chinese, or Italian, remember that we always have healthy options. So, happy and healthy eating! Ladies, let's talk about hair. Now, apart from fashion, it's one of those few things that have global and seasonal trends and forecasts. Having the right hairstyle definitely makes a woman. And to talk about the current It Styles hair trends and how these looks can work for you, and to talk about the current It Styles hair trends and how these looks can work for you, we partnered up with OK Magazine for the ultimate lock lowdown. While some of us have to battle with the occasional bad hair day, some women seem to always have soft, luxurious, stylish hair with the perfect shade and texture. How hard is it to get great hair anyway? As it turns out, having celebrity-looking tresses isn't all that hard. Bring out your fab side with some hair 101. We met three interesting girls with the same uninteresting hairstyle. Long, straight, and black. Young teacher Debbie prefers the conventional look, layered a little over the shoulder. Market analyst Derby sticks to the safe side, long limp locks worn down all the time. Writer Shy can't seem to manage her dark, thick, waist-length hair that weighs her down. Together with our dream team of hair experts, we make it our mission to give these girls a major do-over. Watch and learn! If anyone knows beautiful hair, it's Nicole, resident beauty expert of Top Celebrity Mag, OK. There's a really simple regimen that all women should follow. That's shampoo, conditioning, and deep treatments. Um, it's important because they address the common problems that your hair may be um, experiencing, such as dry hair, or mga frizzy hair, or even dandruff. But it doesn't stop at having healthy hair. The first thing that people notice usually when they see you is your hair. So you have to choose a style that's flattering to your face shape, to your personal style, to your personality, and most, most importantly, your lifestyle as well. Indeed, the search for the perfect hair takes more than knowing what you want and knowing who you want to look like. There's a specific style that's perfect for each face shape. We see Beyonce. She's, she's a good example of an oval face shape. For oval face shapes, you're very lucky because um, almost any style, any length will fit your face. What you need to avoid really is the longer lengths that will only make your face look longer. For square faces like Demi Moore, notice that um, her face shape adds more character to her face, so medyo harsh yung angles kasi pagka square. You want a hairstyle that will soften your look, so soft layers might work for this face shape, and um, even curls, soft curls. Okay. For the round faces, like Kirsten Dunst, you want a look, a style that will elongate your face, so no matter how trendy the bob is right now, um, maybe you can go for something longer. With the heart-shaped faces, normally they have a wider forehead. A good example would be Reese Witherspoon. You can try 
bobs or layered uh, lengths, but uh, with a hair that covers the forehead a bit. For oblong face shape, like Sarah Jessica Parker, what you don't want is longer lengths. It will on only make your face look even longer and heavier, be something shoulder length or even shorter. Customized hair styling. It's just the specialty of the artist at Hair Work Salon, who will be working with our girl's hair. To flatter Debbie's square-shaped face, Ray opted for a low-maintenance trendy bob with fringes to frame her face. Jerby has a heart-shaped face. To draw attention from her rather wide forehead, Nelson cut her hair in layers and side-swept bangs, while Ray permed it for sexy waves. Shai's dark and dreary hair needed a major update, so colorists Chrissy and Dennis gave her a delicious base in chocolate and highlights in caramel. To frame her oval-shaped face and work with her naturally wavy hair, Edgar cut off Shai's hair in shoulder-length soft layers and gave her wispy bands. After Debbie, Jerby and Shai placed the welfare of their tresses in the hands of our Able Hairworks team, check out their fab new do's. Satisfied, very satisfied. Mm -hmm. At first, I was scared because I've, I've never really permed my hair. Uh, but now, I think it's okay and I look really nice. I love it. It's the first time na ganito ka light yung hair ko. Dahil lighter siya, parang it has more texture. So yung waves niya mas litaw. Parang hindi na siya ganun kahirap style. And hindi na siya mabigat. Unlike before, nung sobrang haba niya. Now that you've got great looking hair, you sure want to keep your locks looking luscious, right? There's one more thing to remember, maintenance. Depending on your hair's condition, you should really look for a hair care range that addresses the specific needs of your hair. To keep hair as shiny, smooth, and frizz-free as Debbie's, stash a bottle of anti-frizz serum. For permed hair like Jerby's, make sure your sexy waves are soft and bouncy with curl boosters and softening prods. Conditioners for permed hair are somewhat more intense as to lock in more moisture that's lost. For chocolate-colored tresses as luscious as Shai's, it's important to keep your locks looking extra soft as color-treated hair tends to look dry. Aside from using these products, you should also load up on your water. Um, drink as much water as you can and have a diet rich in fruits and vegetables to because the more healthier you are, the more healthier then your hair will be. Can't wait to get started on your own hairstyle hunt? With proper care, your stylist guidance, and celebs to take a cue from, your hair will turn heads for sure. You're just a wash away from new skin with new Celotec Gentle Exfoliating Wash. True. tried out a new sport this week. You oh, yeah. actually tried out dragon boating. Yep. How was it? I had a great time. Right. Waking up early notwithstanding. Right. But it was really fun. All the girls were really nice. Was had it a great hard? Time. Yeah, I had to say it was hard. Uh -huh. uh, it's really a workout for your upper body strength. But it was a great workout. Yes, it was. Okay. And actually, if you get the form right, you work out both arms and your legs. So basically, full body workout. Yeah. What's the time I inform? So were there any apprehensions before doing it? Well, I had one apprehension. It was called Manila Bay. Oh my goodness. Point taken. <laughs> yep, I, I totally understand. My goodness, they're at dragon boating with the UP women's team. Wow, this I have to see. Watch this. The dragon is one of the most adored symbols in Chinese mythology believed to be one of the rulers of rivers and sea. Which is why dragon boat rowing was originally a Chinese folk ritual dating as far back as 2,000 years ago. Attention! Steeped in history, dragon boating eventually transitioned into modern times as an international water sport. 
For competitive sporting events, dragon boats are generally adorned with decorative Chinese dragon heads and tails and drums. Each boat has 22 crew members on board. 20 paddlers that have to work in pairs as a team and in order to effectively propel the boat forward. A steerer or sweep who controls the dragon boat with a sweep or rig at the rear of the boat. And last but not least, the drummer or caller at the bow facing the paddlers. This guy's considered the heartbeat of the whole operation. Well, it's to keep the beat. Diba? Pag naririnig mo yung drum, ibig sabihin, dyan ka papasok, dyan papasok yung ore mo sa tubig. So, sasabay-sabay lahat ng tao mo sa bangka. Tapos aside from that, nakaka-motivate kapag ka meron yan. Dahil kapag ka last kick, pag yung patapos na yung race, hindi na sabay yan sa, ano eh, sa pace ng, ano, ng mga nagpapado, bibilisan nila yan para ma-agitate. Ma ma <laughs> ma Tsaka yung adrenaline mo lumabas. Mm -hmm. With 22 people on board, dragon boating is definitely one unique water event that relies on teamwork and discipline, and lots of it. It's hard to do a sport, but the most important part, why we're here since 1998, I'm a paddler, because it's a team sport. It's a good camaraderie. So you feel like you're part of a team, and it's nice because you're all together, you're all together, you're all together, you're all together, you're all together. Dragon boat rowing may have started out as a ceremony to honor the Chinese god of water, but today, dragon boat racing is one of the most exciting events on water. And with our own dragon boating track record, it's pretty obvious that this is one sport where the Pinoy can truly excel in. So, para bang ang dragon boat is tailored again uh, sa Filipino because of their height, their weight, yung wilty ka nga, yung dexterity. Coupled all of this, parang tumatama sa atin yung dragon boat. Dragon boat rowing can be strenuous and intense, but when performed with the correct technique, paddling spreads out the intensity of the exercise evenly over all the three major muscle groups, like the arms, legs, and torso. You also kick with your leg, so bukod sa meron kang cardiovascular workout, buong body mo pa napapagana mo. The good news is you don't have to be a super jock to partake in this sport. Anyone can get into it as long as you have the drive, the proper mindset, and the discipline. Rowing sounds easy, right? But judging from how buff rowers are, I'm probably in for a big surprise. I'm here with the Dragon Boat UP women's team to experience dragon boating for the very first time. Good luck na lang talaga. I'm not exactly a morning person, but I gamely set my alarm to be able to make it to the early morning training session of the UP Dragon Boat team. Big muscle group, ang likod, small muscle group of arms. So try to use your body to propel the, the oar. Okay. Your arm is just to hold the oar, mm -hmm. but your body is like to move it. Okay. Para mas matagal bago mapagod. Arms lang kasi mapagod. All right. There's she! No! Right! Theoretically, the roaming arm should be your stronger arm because when paddling, the roaming arm has to move forward and backward to dig enough water to run the boat. It's a paddle, like this, Anna. We call it under and over. It's like a, uh, a spoon. When you're right, your spoon is full of the tube, right? If you're going to use it a little bit, you'll be able to use it. That is the strength. With my right hand as my rowing arm, my left arm became my digging arm, which helps the rowing arm push the paddle in an upward and downward direction. Buti na lang, long limb dako. Perfect yung height niya actually and yung length ng arm span niya dun sa rowing. Kaya sobrang nakakatuwa kasi ang haba-haba agad ng reach niya. Tapos nakakasunod naman siya. Sumakit yung arm talaga and yung dito, yung sa may back. Um, they said nga na yung big muscle group is supposed to be the back. So feeling ko, in time, in, with practice, talaga yung back mo yung pang, uh, ano mo nang, pang move mo ng weight mo. Okay, stand by. That's late. No! We did what the UP team called mild stroke training. Good for developing cardiovascular endurance. But even if they called it mild, it was anything but mild for a newbie like me. Tapos sa gitna ng race, 
pero meron kami yung start. Yes, nag-over pa, nag-over pa. Hard stroke. Sabi na tao, medyo mas mabilis ng konti dito. Powerful. Okay, mas mabilis at mas powerful ko dito. Okay. <laughs> And just like the true fit and fab trooper, I kept up with the pace of the rest of the paddlers. It was, to say the least, absolutely tiring, but worth it in the end. Uh, well, I'm tired. Even if it's like 1, 2, 3, 30s or 20s in one go. It's tired because it's like this, like this. That's it. I feel like this is what I work out. So I need to learn the right form. It's like the cycle of the cycle. Not a bad day's work for a rookie rower, if I do say so myself. Dragon boat rowing is not easy, but once you survive your first lesson, you'll definitely get hooked. Fit and Fab will be right back. If you've ever wondered about foundations, well, tonight is your lucky night. With the myriad of foundations in the market in every shape and form, have you often wondered which one is best for you? Liquid, powder, and cream foundation? Oh my! Find out how to differentiate the three on tonight's Q&A. Using a foundation is important because it's the base of your makeup. Whenever you put on makeup, you have to put the proper foundation because everything else will not matter, like the color you put on your eyes or the lipstick you put on. It covers what needs to be covered. And at the same time, siya yung nagbibigay ng illusion ng isang perfect and flawless skin. Putting on foundation isn't just a matter of dabbing it on your face. Choosing the right kind is still the key. But you also have to be aware of your skin type and the time of day. You can choose from three basic kinds of foundation. The most popular of which is powder foundation. Ang powder naman is very good for let's say kung oily ang skin mo, medyo combination, yun ang okay. And ang powder ang pinaka easiest to apply. Walang blending na needed. So start with the tip of your nose and then spread it out evenly. Powder will pulverize your oil and makeup worries during daytime. Kasi ang gagawin mo lang naman, you just blot it sa area kung saan ka madalas nag-oil. Diba? And it lasts the whole day. All day oil free coverage makes powder foundations perfect for everyday use. If your skin's a little bit on the dry side, your best makeup bet is liquid foundation. Apart from being perfect for your dry skin, liquid foundations are fantastic for wrinkles and lines coverage. Very gentle yung liquid sa lines. Hindi siya magkakos ng creasing. This is also used sparingly, for example, under the eyes. Um, best also like in your cheeks and um, in your along, along along your lip line. You put that on so that um, it will look more even. Liquid is fluid with your evening escapades. Apply it sparingly with your fingertips or sponge. Kasi hindi siya ganun ka heavy. Kasi it's sa akin na as a makeup artist, I always believe if you don't if it's not broken, then don't fix it. Kung hindi naman masama yung condition ng skin mo then you don't need to pile on makeup. So, if you want the all-natural look, liquid is the way to go. Last but not the least on our foundation hit list, the cream to powder foundation. Cream to powder naman, ito yung texture nito, yung pag hinawakan mo para siyang creamy, pero once na in mo, ang finish niya is powder. Cream to powder is easy to apply with a sponge or a foundation brush. This type of foundation serves the same purpose as the powder foundation. Cream foundation is usually sheer to full coverage, meaning if you put it on sparingly, it will look very natural, but if you want to cover up more blemishes like freckles or any sunspots, you put more of it so you, it, it can be covered more. Cream to powder is sure to keep you fresh and oil-free all day. Our experts recommend a yellow undertone foundation for all Filipinas, whether or not you're morena or mestiza. So, pag naghahanap tayo ng foundation, kuha kayo ng white paper. Kung may tester, kuha kayo, swipe nyo, kuha kayo ng konti, ilagay nyo sa white paper. Tingnan ninyo, anong kulay ba siya? Yellow ba siya or pink? Makikita nyo sa papel eh. So, pag pink, wag doon. Kasi yun, pag in natin sa mukha natin yun, yun yung nagto-turn orange. So don't be stingy, ladies. Invest on the right foundation. Let your beauty shine. A 
couple of weeks back, we proclaimed Lori Beth Serrano the winner of a complete lifestyle makeover, Care Off Fit and Fab. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be following Lori Beth and her Fit and Fab journey to be a healthier, better her, with a little help from a few friends like Kelsey Aid. And tonight is all about meeting lucky lady Lori Beth and finding out how she fared on her first few days of being on the Fit and Fab wagon. Watch this. We at Fit and Fab believe that as we live in a hectic and high-stress society, it is imperative that we girls take good care of ourselves. But with our very busy schedules, how can we give ourselves the TLC that we deserve? First, by having a regular exercise routine, which helps us become healthier, live longer lives, and be free from stress. Pag nag-exercise kasi, we're releasing the feel-good hormone, which is the endorphin. So pag nag-exercise ka, talagang happy-happy. Next, by having a healthy and balanced diet that's rich in nutrition and low in fat and cholesterol. One that helps us have stronger bones to fight female-prone diseases like osteoporosis. Balanced diet, kailangan natin para lahat ng kailangan natin energy, yung pangpalakas, pagbigay ng ating gasoline sa araw-araw, yung protein for muscle building and cell production, at saka yung prutas at gulay para sa resistance sa sakit. And lastly, by projecting the right attitude and confidence for our total well-being. Whether it's by wearing the right clothes and makeup, flaunting the latest hairstyle, and carrying yourself in style through perfect posture, thanks to strong bones. Talking about being fit and fab, let's get to know someone who we think represents the woman of today. Despite having a busy schedule, let's see if she can manage her time and make some lifestyle changes all in a matter of five weeks so that she can become fitter, healthier, and more fabulous. Meet our complete lifestyle makeover winner, Lori Beth Serrano. A graduating law student, a research associate at the UP Law Center and USAID Emerge, and a newly married wife, Lori Beth has a full schedule day in and day out. I usually wake up at around 4 or 5 in the morning. I get ready na for, for work. I freshen up. If there's a meeting, if I have no meeting, I just stay here at home and I do my research work online um, or I write some things and um, afterwards I continue studying. And because of her hectic and demanding schedule, she definitely has a hard time trying to look good for her husband and more importantly, for herself. I think mataba ako for my bone structure. And I'm flabby. I have a lot of problem areas, such as I can't wear two-piece swimsuits. Stubborn, unmanageable hair, flabby arms and unwanted pounds, and a non-existent workout routine. These are just some of the things that Lori Beth would like to change. You know what? I don't really put on makeup. I just put on the basics, foundation, and then um, lipstick. I used to do boxing. A little, just a little, but um, my schedule now doesn't really permit me to do so. And as for her other eating habits, junk food morning, day and night? That's not right, is it? To make matters worse, Lori Beth usually orders takeout because unfortunately, she doesn't know how to cook. Looks like this friend of ours needs a little help from Fit and Fab and Calciaid. This is Calciaid to a better you. We first took Lori Beth to Gold's Gym where she met with personal trainer Susan Magdalas, who's gonna be her best friend me for the next few weeks. Ang weight ni Lori Beth compared uh, kung ibibase natin sa height niya, hindi siya ganun ka kabigat or kataba for her height. So, kailangan lang talagang mag-tone yung muscles niya para magmukha siyang fit. My daily routine then consisted of going to the gym at 6 a.m. Um, every day. I did that for about a year, but I just did cardio stuff. So, I didn't really have a, a plan. But hopefully, with Susan's help, Lori Beth's gym routine will go on past the first day. Because for the next four weeks, it's all about cardio, weight training, and different ab exercises so that Lori Beth can have that banging body she's always wanted. Lori also got to have a chat with Christy Marasigan, our resident nutritionist. 
Eh kahit nasa desirable weight range si Lori Beth, since sedentary ang lifestyle niya at saka from her activities, nag-aaral, nagtatrabaho, may project, maraming deadlines. So, ibig sabihin, highly stressed din yung uh, buhay ni Lori Beth. So, she has to watch her your eating habits. According to our nutritionist, to achieve optimum health and weight, Lori Beth's meal plan for a day should include one cup of veggies, three servings of fruits, four servings of grains or carbs, one serving of nuts or legumes, five servings of protein sources like fish, chicken or egg, one serving of dairy products, three servings of good oil like canola or olive oil, and two servings of sugar like fruit jam and honey. Whew. That's a lot of measurements. Yung breakfast, lunch, dinner, heavier siya in the sense ng mga 400 calories siya. So may kanin or may choice of bread siya or potato or kamote with ulam, tapos may vegetable. So i-co-control namin yung serving portion niya. Christy advises Lori Beth to get rid of the junk food so as to avoid intake of too much salt and preservatives that are harmful to the body. Pwede siyang kumain ng mga fresh fruits, uh, apple, kung mahilig siya sa crunchy, siguro yun yung pwede, peras, apple, banana, or, or kung gusto niya yung protein rich naman ng mga nuts, pwede yun. So, Lori Beth, do you think you can hack not having junk food that long? Lori Beth is turning 30 next year. According to experts, it is during this time that we women start experiencing bone loss. Strong bones and joints ensure a healthy and generally pain-free life. So we took Lori Beth to Dr. Luisa Bola, who gave her a bone density test. It measures the the um, the thickness of your bone. At a certain age, you have a certain uh, amount of bone that should be present. And if you are below that, that means you are at risk already of developing eventual osteoporosis. It is through our wrist that this bone density machine can measure if our bones are functioning well. And after just a few minutes... Based on the results, no, based on her age, she's still within the normal range, which is very good. Uh, but she's still quite young, no, 29 years old. So what I would suggest also to maintain, uh, this, that's what I told, to maintain uh, this very good, actually very good result, is to have a change of lifestyle. In spite of the favorable result, Doc Luis still recommends Lori Beth to increase her calcium intake just to be on the safe side. As we reach the, let's say, 20s, and, and, then, and uh, as, as we go on, there's more already of more bone loss than more bone gain. So that's why there's an important of, importance of uh, supplementing with calcium, making sure our diet is rich in calcium. I'm about to turn 30 in a couple of months, and I think I really need to, to take um, supplements um, in addition to eating food that are rich in calcium. This is just the beginning of the road to wellness for Lori Beth. Believe me, this is not going to be easy for her as she is going to go through challenges she has never tried before. Join us in the next four weeks as we see Lori Beth's transformation from being blah to being fit and fabulous with Fit and Fab and Calciade. Because with Calciade, you'll build beautiful bones and fight osteoporosis, helping you be a better you. Next time on Calciade to a new you. Will Lori Beth be able to survive the first day in the gym? And will she be able to pick the right food choices in the grocery? Find out next week on Fit and Fab. Last September 20th was a very special day for us, don't you think? Yes, because last September 20 was our very first Fit and Fab day. And if you missed out on all the Kikai action, not to worry. We made sure to record every fun and fab moment. We are here at Lorietta for Fit and Fab Day, a great day for beauty, health, and wellness indulgence. Fit and Fab Day is our way of saying thanks to all our viewers and our sponsors who've made Fit and Fab successful ever since our launch in April. Um, everyone here helped out our show in one way or another. We have EMV, we have Skin Food, we have the National Source, we have the Surfing Academy. And today is just basically for people to come and indulge in their beauty, fitness, and health fantasy. And to help us give back, we tapped a number of our Fit and Fab partners to help us make Fit and Fab Day the ultimate day of beauty, 
health and wellness indulgence. This Fit and Fab promotes health, beauty and wellness and the EMA believes in uh, promoting healthy skin, actually beautiful skin. Fit and Fab values the stronger woman, the stronger Filipino woman and someone who's healthy, um, fit and fab. And I think that's one aspect about this program that's very much aligned with the, with the brand on hand. With Dulca Nathan, per se. Thanks to the free makeovers, free consultations, free fitness advice, as well as all those freebies given away, it was no wonder why every woman had a grand old time. Nakakatuwa yung mga services na nandito din. I love the makeup. The whole fair actually was fun. Yung mga scrub, then yung games, yung sa host, yung mga games, sa'yo. Bakit makeup yung napili mo? Uh, try lang kasi hindi ako marunong mag ano, ng sarili ko pag makeup. Best chance talaga to learn dito. Happy naman kayo sa tinry sa inyo. Happy. Indeed, Fed and Fab J proved that a day of makeup, beauty, fitness, health, and fun is definitely a Saturday well spent. See you at the next Fit and Fab Day. More than 300 guests enjoying the free consultation, demos, and services. We can definitely say that Fit and Fab Day was a huge success. See you guys next time. We would like to say thank you so much to everyone who supported us from day one by watching our show and sending in those letters week after week. Keep those letters coming. Please write to us at fitandfab at gmanetwork.com. We really do appreciate everything that comes in the mail. Once again, I am Maggie Wilson. And I'm Tara Ligaras. Join us again next week for another hour of beauty, fashion, health, fitness, and wellness only here on Fit and Fab. Fit and Fab.